This is a spreadsheet from chapter six. So you're gonna see a lot of the math behind some of the charts and tables from chapter six. Now this is something of course is gonna be up on our course website that you can download and play with and look at. I'm just gonna run through so you get an idea of what's in the spreadsheet and how it relates to chapter six. Okay, so this first one, which is called spreadsheet 6.1, it's the capital market expectations for bonds and stocks. So here is the scenarios, severe recession, mild recession, normal growth, or boom, and the probabilities that they will occur. These are the rate of returns for a stock fund, and we can get the, what we call like the mean or expected rate of return by multiplying uh, the probability times the rate of return, finding the sum. So down here we just find the sum, and this is gonna be the expected return, which is proportionally weighted to the probability and the rate of return. Now, in the bond fund, we can do the same thing. We can have our rates of return, multiply it by the probabilities. Here, the results summed to get the sum. So the expected returns of stocks is higher than the expected returns on bonds. And if you look at the overall returns, you can see that they're not that well correlated because here we have a negative year for stocks, a positive year for bonds, pos very positive year, boom is a very positive year for uh, stocks, but a negative year for bonds. So you can see that although the dispersion of returns from 30 to negative 37 is much larger than uh, negative nine to 15. So the overall expected mean is tempered by that sort of weighted average. So we know stocks have a, expected return higher than bonds, and based on this dispersion, just looking at this dispersion, lower risk for bonds. Okay, so let's move in, let's, but let's quantify that a little bit more, and that's what the spreadsheet uh, 6.2 does. So now if we're gonna apply some of the statistical measures we learned, we could take that um, you know, expected return that we had calculated, which is, Uh, well, we'll get back to that for a second. So let's just calculate these numbers one by one. So this is the probability, the rate of return, and then the deviation from the expected return. So that expected return, we have to go back over here. This is the expected return they're basing that on. So in this formula, you can see that they're pulling from the other spreadsheet. Okay, so negative 37 minus 10 is going to be the expected return for each of these. So we're minusing 10. From, um, from each of these to get the expected return. Now we square this deviation, so it's just 40, negative 47 times negative 47, we get the squared deviations, and then we multiply the probability by the standard deviation here, and what we get is um, this column, which we find the sum of this column, and we get the, the variance or the sum of this column. Uh, and then we, if we do the square root, which you see in the formula up here, we get the standard deviation. So once again, proving that since the standard deviation here is higher than the standard deviation here, and the variance here is higher than the variance here, they appear to, that the stock fund appears to be riskier than the bond fund. But unless we use the coefficient of variation, see that, if we use the coefficient of variation, we really can't compare them. So the coefficient of variation would, would say, let's take the standard deviation and divide it by, take the standard deviation and we'll divide it by the mean to get a coefficient of variation. And we see here that even though they look almost double the risk, if we just look at these straight numbers, if we look at the CV, coefficient of variation, we see that the numbers are actually quite closer in, in comparable. So the coefficient of variation gives us comparable risk. Okay, let's move into uh, this spreadsheet, which is 6.3. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have credit portfolio that's gonna be 40% in stocks, 60% in bonds. Okay, so here's the probabilities again for these scenarios. And if we look at the rate of return for these scenarios, we have the rate of return, and then we take, okay, again, B, B multiplied by C, we have the expected return, and this is gonna be um, 
these returns are a combination of 40% stocks, 40% bonds, and this is what these returns are here. So now we have a new uh, expected return of 7%, which is between the 5 and 10 uh, purely stock and purely bond portfolios from 6-1. So if we calculate the um, deviation from the expected return, which is going to be uh, column C minus D, uh, the expected return, which is D11, Square those deviations, multiply those deviations by the probability, and we can sum these, find the sum to get the variance. So here's the variance. And the square root of the variance to get the standard deviation. So here we get a much lower standard deviation than we saw here. So we have 16 and 8. So combining stocks together, we have a much lower standard deviation. And if we were to actually do the CV here, say um, and we see so here we see um, say a CV of 1.65 1.86 but combining stocks and bonds together we have a much lower CV so this would be a much safer portfolio when you put stocks and bonds together okay so it's six four okay so here um, okay so here we're doing the covariance so we have the probabilities again. We have the stock fund, the bond fund, and then we can multiply the stock return by the bond return to get a product of the deviation for each of these. And then we take that product of deviation and multiply it by the probability, find the sum of this, and what we get is the, um, the, the covariance. So we have a negative covariance, which makes sense because when bonds are going up, stocks are going down. When stocks are going up, bonds are going down. So we have a negative covariance and the correlation coefficient. So if we file this formula here in the correlation coefficient, we get a uh, negative 0.49. Since it's a negative uh, correlation coefficient, we know that these are moving in opposite directions part of the time. Okay. Okay, now let's go to spreadsheet uh, six five, the investment opportunity set with uh, stock and uh, bond funds. Okay, so here are the different, so here's the expected return for stocks, expected return for bonds, standard deviation stocks, standard deviation bonds. Um, now, if we do a, this would be bonds stocks together. So here we're doing different weights of portfolios. So here we're doing um, negative stocks um, and then beta uh, weighted bonds the higher. So, so these, these would be, I guess, a short position here. But if you look at these portfolios, make a little bit more sense where we're doing 10% stocks, 90% bonds, up until 90% stocks, 10% bonds. Or here, in this case, zero stocks, 100% bonds, or zero bonds and 100% stocks. Here's where we overpurchase stocks, underpurchase bonds. And we can get the expected return by taking the um, column A uh, multiplied by column B. So what we're doing here is we're, we're saying, let's take A8 multiplied by A5, which is the expected return, add that to uh, B8. Here, multiply by B5, the expected return for, for bonds. And this is going to give us our expected returns of that combined portfolio. And we see that when we have more stock, we have higher expected returns, which makes sense because stock has higher returns overall. But the standard deviations, if we look at the standard deviations, we see that there they modify. So the lowest standard deviation would be here at 7 so this would say that this would be the optimal portfolio of stocks to bonds because this has the lowest the least riskiest portfolio because it's the lowest standard deviation. Okay, so some things to note. Negative weights indicate short positions. So we're short bonds here, we're short stocks here. Uh, the weights of the minimum variance portfolios are computed using the, the formula in footnote one, which I'm not sure what footnote one is. Okay, that must be in the textbook. Okay, moving to 6.6. Six. So here's the investment opportunity set for stocks and bonds, various co correlation coefficients. So here again, we make those, those, we have different 
we have weights in stocks, and then we do the uh, expected portfolio. And this is this is the same coming up from this spreadsheet here. So we see that these expected returns are matching what we have here, which is a smaller set. So then the uh, portfolio, we look to create a, the covariance uh, of the portfolio. And we can look at um, the standard deviation, negative one, zero, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and one. And then we can see how we're, we're gonna calculate those, um, the portfolio correlation coefficients using the formula set out in the chapter. Here you can see the formulas in the cells. They're a little bit complex, so I'm not gonna go through it variable by variable, but you can go into the spreadsheet and kind of see how this is uh, calculated so we can get you know, the um, standard deviation of each of these subsets. Okay. Now here's a, um, some other data in the spreadsheet that you could look at. Okay. So, so here we have, let's make this bigger for you. So here we have a look at uh, rates between Ford, uh, rates of return Ford, Walmart, Bank of America, market index, T-bills. So this is just some data uh, in various spreadsheets here from some of the examples in the textbook where they're getting the data between, this is the market return minus the risk-free rate, the treasury bills, 10-year bonds and stock returns from 27 all the way till, I think they go up to 26, 2017. Uh, some more data on that, and then even more data. So this is just some data you utilized in the textbook that you can look at that has a relative relative to some what some of the examples are. So you can actually play around with and see some of the actual data utilized in the textbook. That might be of some interest to you. I know I, I leaf through it a little bit, and it's kind of interesting to look at this. So uh, it's all backed up here if you want to play around with it, uh, make, do some of the calculations in this chapter. Okay, so this is my you know, overview of some of the mathematics from chapter six. You can go into the spreadsheet. I'll have it posted for you and you can actually see the formulas behind the cells um, to help reinforce some of what we learned in chapter six. Okay, thank you for your time and take care.